Hello friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you are back. Either way, thank you so so much for clicking on my video today. If you are new, hi, my name's Rabbit and my pronouns are they them. And if you're back, welcome back. Either way, thanks again for being here. I gotta say, I am so freaking excited for this video today. I never thought that this kind of day would come and I like literally feel like I'm shaking out of excitement because um, I've had my eye on this doll line for quite a long time and um, they've just been on my radar and I've always like looked at them from afar and like every time I've gone on eBay and looked for them they've usually been around like $75 for a doll and like $20 shipping and that's in United States money and I'm just like okay as a little Canadian person no sorry can't do or if I do find a good deal on a doll it's like $30 for the doll but then the shipping is $50 and I'm like what the heck so I've just been like scoping out the website the secondhand markets for these for quite a while and I did talk recently I think about my doll that I found um, sorry I haven't said the name yet I was trying to build up the anticipation but now it's just weird basically I'm talking about bee goth dolls in this series my first ever bee goth I guess it was technically this vinyl figure that is Belladonna her dress is what the shirt I'm wearing is inspired by I made this myself after I was like super inspired after I got this vinyl figure because I just think she's like so beautiful and so iconic and I just like think she's so freaking cute. So yes, this is my little Belladonna figure. Found her on Facebook Marketplace and I'm obsessed with her. I think she was around $10 and she came with her box and she's just like a little teeny gal, like little black bangs and one like yellow eye with a bat in it and one green eye. Little piercings, this cool dress, swivel body, swivel arms, little sleeves, little gloves, boots. Okay, this is like my technical like doll of this series that I talked about in my Halloween vlogs and it's Storm, Storm O' Misery. This is her evening version and she is freaking breathtaking. She's got like that gorgeous heterochromia, this beautiful dress that I don't know if I showed last time but it has like real lace-up details on the back like grommets and ribbons beautiful like Morticia Adams flare out in the sleeves and just like oh she is exquisite I adore her and I did realize she's missing her nose ring so I will look into replacing that with just like a little jewelry piece or piece of metal shortly however she's iconic storm of misery I love her and yeah basically for a really long time like a year or two these were the only dolls in my collection despite looking into them pretty much shortly after I found out about Monster High because they came out so long ago they can be kind of difficult to find but recently <laughs> on Facebook marketplace I found this person who was selling a bunch of their Beagoth dolls and they were just like make me an offer and the only problem was that they lived about like three hours away from me but with the amount of dolls they had I was like you know what let me message them and like see if maybe they can ship or like we can figure something out they were like oh I'm actually like swinging by where you live kind of soon and I like offered them a price that was basically around $30 a doll which for dolls that haven't been produced for 20 years and that was I think their original price when they came out I think is kind of on the low end especially when they're 75 but she was like okay that sounds good and basically <laughs> That's how we ended up here. So actually I ended up paying a little under 30 for each one, um, but they are absolutely incredible. And yeah, my usual thing with Monster High dolls is I don't pay more than $10 for a doll that's fully closed. But with these, they're just like much more difficult to find than Monster High dolls. They're just different. <laughs> and I think they're absolutely incredible. If you're into Monster High or alternative fashion dolls or just gothic fashion in general and makeup and fun, interesting looks and character designs, I think you'll be really interested in this. I stayed up, I think, till 2 a.m. last night because I found out that they have a comic book series and I found like PDFs of it online. And um, if you're wondering why my makeup looks like this, I got like barbed wire and like a rose, um, cause I was trying to be very dramatic because they all have like really beautiful dramatic makeup. So I just wanted to kind of emulate, do my best. I did want to mention really quickly this book that I found secondhand again, and it's about the living dead dolls, but at the end, we got a whole section on bee goth dolls, which is really, really fantastic. And it's got like some of the figures in there as well. So at some point I really want to make a video about alternative fashion doll lines like other than Monster High. So look forward to that coming soon. But for now, yes, I just wanted to really quickly um, show off this cool book that shows some bleeding edge goth dolls and figurine kind of pictures that I think are super beautiful. Plus it's a coffin shaped book, which like, how could you? go wrong with that. But basically the exciting part of this video is that I got seven 
freaking dolls to add to my collection in one day at $28 a doll, which is basically um, my dream come true. I am dying. <laughs> the lady like came out because I thought she was only selling six dolls, but it actually turned out to be seven. But yeah, when she had sent me the pictures, it was only of the six and I was just like, oh my gosh. So there was just like an extra one in there. So yes, this. <laughs> This is the giant stack of the new babies that are in my collection and um, I am gonna unbox them but don't worry because she told me like listen these were mine since I was 13 and like I did unbox them already like as a 13 year old so like sorry about that and I was like don't even worry about it that makes me feel a lot better because I'd feel really bad unboxing them if like they had been like in the pristine condition. But they look in incredible condition. Plus I was gonna unbox them anyway because I don't have room for these like giant freaking boxes. And I think they just really should shine out on their own um, to the glory of the world. <laughs> I also wanna give a shout out to this channel, Werewolf Lydia, who I've just been binging all their Bleeding Edge goth doll content lately. They are incredible and I absolutely love their uh, reviews of the dolls. So yes, um, <laughs> without further rambling, oh my God, we've been like here forever. I wanna find get into unboxing the dolls and showing you guys them so let's freaking get to it <laughs> i never thought this day would come especially for like this price because yeah i was never gonna buy them for 75 dollars each that was just like not gonna happen for me i'm sorry <sighs> my heart is palpitating okay <laughs> so first i want to show you guys one that i've heard called the quintessential one of the begoths and it's malice Let's look at her in her box. I'm sorry if there's any glare, but it's a very simple box as you can see. Not coffin shaped, which is okay. However, the box is still pretty cool with just like this uh, simple cardboard background with like this skull swirl. And on the back, we've got all the dolls in the series. This is series one, I believe. And on the back, it says, bleeding edge goth figures will capture your black little hearts. Take them home with you and embrace the underground subculture. These figures will knock you dead. So let the world know you're a goth or simply on the bleeding edge of morbid fashion love that. Bleeding Edge Incorporated 2003, which is insane. Um, I'm recording this in 2023 on Friday the 13th, <laughs> which just feels so appropriate. Um, it's, it's like late in the night and I just got home after working and then going to pick these up. To think that these are from 20 years ago and I was still able to find them. I just, I feel so blessed. So Malice's full name is Malice Looming and there is a doll version of her and there's also a figurine version of her. The figurine is very popular. I do find that the vinyl figures tend to go for more than the dolls, which is kind of surprising. The vinyl figure is really gorgeous. It's called Malice in Wonderland, so if that kind of gives you an idea, it's a very adorable kind of play on Alice in Wonderland. Okay, so this is the first one. Let's take her out of her box. I wonder how long you've been in there. For how beautiful and incredible these dolls are. It's really sad how little internet presence they have. I guess with coming out in 2003, it was a little bit before the big boom of the internet, and you can still find a lot of like blog spots and stuff on it, but in terms of YouTube content, there's not a ton of people doing it out there, so I'm really happy to finally have some of these dolls of my own to kind of try to contribute a little bit to that. So I've clipped the Tape. And um, this is the Malice that has the fully black hair. There is a variant of her that has red bangs. However, I actually do kind of prefer the fully black hair version even though she's less rare. And for being 20 years old, I am really surprised at how soft her hair is. With Storm, it's kind of hard to tell her hair quality because it's in braids and I never really paid that much attention to it. But with Malice, I finally have like a doll that I can fully like touch the hair of and it's really nice. I'm also just incredibly impressed with the quality of her outfit. I know that the seller told me she took them out of their box, but they seem to still be strapped in. So I don't know if she just means she like slid them out, which I don't really consider taking out of box, but whatever. She's out of her box. So let's take a look at our beautiful Malice Looming. She, I have to say, I don't think the cameras do her justice because every time I've seen a review of her, I was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, okay. But in person, it's incredible. Let me kind of like smooth her bangs down so you get a little bit better idea. I might try to boil wash her, though I'm a little bit scared to do it. Her face is kind of sticky, which is interesting. I think it's just the material she's made of, but um, she, okay. Let's go from head to toe. So, Malice is gorgeous. She has this adorable little tool bow on the top of her head. She's got little black bangs and a little just past the shoulder, blunt black 
haircut, which is quite soft and has like a little bit of box hair, but we can absolutely, absolutely live with that. She's got gorgeous blue eyeshadow and one red and black eye and one eye that's kind of like yellow and red and looks like demonic or devilish or something super exciting. Underneath she has these like really faded mascara tear looking makeup which I just love. I really need to do more like teary makeup. I think it's such a gorgeous look. She's also got two eyebrow piercings. You can see there. Pierced ears. A big old lip ring. And I think that's it for her face piercings. And then she has this necklace that a lot of the dolls have. It's a black faux leather with a big old crucifix, very early 2000s goth, very much appreciate that. She has this quintessential fishnet long sleeve shirt and over top of that, this really adorable lace up tank top, vest, top, let's just say, that's kind of made of this faux leather material with these gold grommets and it's just so cool to see like leather and latex and tulle and like all these super fun different materials and textures in a fashion doll. Her skirt is black latex with little grommets and these zipper teeth details, which is super fun. I gotta include that in my own customs now when I get back into them. Stripey tights, which I think are just wonderful, very Alice in Wonderland, which with her name being Malice Looming, love it. And then her boots are super cute. They would be even cuter with a little bit of uh, painted detail, I think. So I might add that. Collectors, please don't hate me, but I think it would look really, really good. And um, yeah, they're just kind of like little high heeled. Don't know what these types of shoes are called, but like kind of little low boots. Um, so that's Miss Malice Looming. And I think she's absolutely gorgeous. Really, really impressed with the quality of her clothes. And I did prepare everyone a little stand last night in preparation for their arrival. So when I got Storm, oh misery over there, I think I found that the Monster High boy stands fit them. Got her on a Monster High boy stand. You can also get knockoff Monster High stands on like AliExpress and Amazon. And that's what I've got Storm on over here. It's just like a clear plastic knockoff stand and you know what let's put you with your friends aren't they so cute we're gonna have this little adorable goth family okay oh the next ones are all so good okay so next we're gonna talk about one of the ones that i was most excited for and when i saw because okay originally i had messaged this seller and i had told her hey like i'm interested in all of them like are these still available she said like hey i've sold some of them so i'll have to see which ones are available and then she didn't message me back for about a month because it was in december and then in january i was like hey sorry to bug you like what's up and she was like oh yes um i'll send you the photos and i was expecting like her to maybe have like one or two left but the fact that she had all these left and the fact that like because i was like oh she probably won't have my favorite ones left but the fact that she did have all my favorite ones left i was like oh so so freaking lucky i think the only one i wasn't able to get is julia doom which if you're curious i'll put a picture of her here but she's green and black very very cool a little bit um toxic for now we're talking about my queen i am so excited to be able to see her and gaze upon her my lord it's sinstress she in my opinion is one of the most iconic bleeding edge dolls she's the only one with this kind of makeup uh, people have said kind of different things whether it's her eyes are closed or she has no eyes or it's corpse paint or what but the way it's painted it kind of looks like she just has her eyes closed i'll see if i can get a better picture of it once she's out of the box you can kind of see the black lines where her eyeliner would be however for all we know there could just be no eyes under it there so who am i to say regardless sinstress incredible doll let's get her out of this box and she's another one from series one amazing amazing they all have the same background which is like the pretty simple swirly skulls no complaints there let's pull her out okay oh my goodness she's so incredible in person okay i didn't realize she had a ponytail it almost looks like pigtails the way it like kind of splits into two and i think that's probably quite intentional but she's gorgeous she has um, okay let's just take a minute take a minute she's incredible <laughs> Okay, so Miss Sinstress, she has this gorgeous black hair. Again, really surprisingly good quality for a doll that's 20 years old. It's got blue underneath. And then for her makeup, we have the aforementioned black eyes. And yeah, I think you can see a little bit the lines where you can almost see like her eyes are closed, but it's absolutely breathtaking, especially in person. She's just 
so freaking gorgeous. She has the lines like going up and down. I think this would make a really wonderful cosplay. For her lipstick, she has black lip liner and then red lipstick in like inside. And then two earrings in each ear, plus a nose ring and a lip ring. Absolutely gorgeous. She has this necklace that's very common with the dolls of this uh, series and I thought that the cross would be plastic but actually it does seem to be some sort of metal and again the faux leather collar. Her dress is absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's like this stretchy black material kind of like a synthetic nylon type of situation. In terms of posability and stuff I think these are on old Barbie bodies from what I understand. Um, correct me if I'm wrong but I think that's what I've heard. So their arms can move, their heads can kind of move waist articulation and they have the uh bend and snap i don't think that's what they're called pop and snap knee you know the ones that like just kind of do this so they can just kind of kick out a little bit <laughs> sorry we were talking about her dress which is gorgeous black stretchy fabric the sleeves have these like long pieces that are like cut into strips so it just like looks like she's gonna like come after you. I love it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Her dress reminds me of a black widow a little bit with this sort of kind of hourglass shape with the cutouts. I really really like the way her dress is done with these like red diamonds in it. I think that would be a really good design to do on like a human sized dress for myself. Since dress would honestly be a wonderful Halloween costume, cosplay, all of these dolls would be amazing for cosplays or Halloween costumes. I would love to see more of those. Her boots are fairly simple, just some kind of black combat boots, lace up, gorgeous. I... Oh my god! Her feet are so itty bitty. She's got like the itty bitty Barbie feet with just like the big giant goth boots, which I'm obsessed with. It's like, you know when you see those pictures of like the goth boot zipped up and then the goth boot unzipped and there's like a Hello Kitty sock or something underneath? That's what it feels like when you see the teeny tiny dainty little feet. You are so cute. I love you, Sinstress. I'm obsessed with you. She, don't tell the others, but she is kind of treasured. A treasure in my collection. I mean, so are all the storms. I, when we get into the storms, I'm gonna, die. I, I can't believe I got this lot, you guys. This is, uh, this is a dream come true. Next is another super, super exciting one that with some of the dolls, when I first saw them, like on the internet or whatever, from far away, I was just kind of like, eh, like, cool, but eh. But then when I watched videos or like looked at close-up pictures of them where you could actually like see all the details on their face and their makeup and all their things, it was just like, oh my god. I find toys so, so wonderful when they're able to express all these incredible personalities and the fact that we have these that are like from this subculture that I love so dearly with all of my heart and that they're from like so long ago and they just like feel so nostalgic and like the styles are very emblematic, I think, of the style of like back then, but it's still a style that I love to emulate and I feel like I've just been going through this renaissance of like doing all the things that like 13 year old me wanted to do but like didn't have the money or feel the confidence in order to do them so lately I just I've been feeling myself in my 20s just kind of going back to my like spooky roots and it's been incredible and these dolls have just been like such an exciting little treat for me in it um so without further rambling let's get on to Miss Divinity are you freaking joke. So she is, I believe, I want to say series three? Series three, I was correct. Okay, yes. So Divinity is from series three. I don't think she has a last name. So this is what the back for the boxes in series three looks like. We got our series three girls up here. Very exciting sneak peek of some that we will get. And sorry about the glare. Let me read you what the back of the box says for this. Goth just got hotter with Bleeding Edges series three. Influenced by the elegant fashion and sublime culture of the gothic community, Bleeding Edge gives to you more wickedly lovely vixens for your collection. But never fear, the macabre factory of doll creators will have much more for you in the future. Don't be surprised if one of these dolls looks just like you or someone you dated. The Begoths family are living, breathing inspirations. Enjoy ghouls. And I didn't mention this on the series one boxes, but one of the cute things that it says um, on the bottom there, it says, no goths were harmed in the making of this product, but some were saddened. <laughs> which is cute. I have a feeling that Divinity might have been my favorite if I was to find these dolls back when I was earlier in my teen years, like, cause I didn't know about these when I was in my baby bat days. When I was first getting into a, the fashion side of the gothic subculture, the one that really, really attracted me were these incredibly beautiful, just like breathtakingly elegant, vampiric, 
ladies with like these kind of dresses, which, oh my God, I am drooling over this doll. One of the sad things with older dolls like this, unfortunately, especially, especially if they get exposed to the sun, is you can get this uh, yellowing effect. I, it's so bright, you probably are having a little bit of difficulty seeing it. In person, you can see that her face is a little bit um, darker than her skin tone, which is fine. Just, uh, just a heads up about older dolls and um, the fact that vinyl tends to yellow over time. Okay, so Divinity was by far the hardest to get out of the box because of all of this incredible, gorgeous, delicate lace that was just like pinned into all the little spots, which really made me wonder, like the lady said she had unboxed them all before, but like they still seem to have the original kajinkers. That's what my world calls them, but I don't know what they're actually called. I'll put a picture. <laughs> um, regardless, the little like tag things. But oh my god, look at this beauty. This is like such a classic, like elegant gothic look that was just everything I wanted to emulate when I was 13 and like first saw a picture of like some incredibly glamorous woman clad in black with like stunning black lipstick and like a... Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about Miss Beautiful Divinity here. She's got gorgeous black and white striped hair, giving us a little bit of that Frankie Stein look, pre-Frankie Stein of course, since these came out in 2003. She's got an incredible veil almost like she's a gothic bride or maybe someone in mourning or perhaps the young wife that is oh so sad about her husband that just mysteriously died perhaps she's giving that look no she's she's not far too sweet for that i believe oh my goodness i love her she's so freaking cute okay so she has green eyes which really don't have any super strange symbols or contacts or anything in them which is very unusual most of the begoths especially in the earlier series tended to have kind of the contact lens look um with like the swirls or the x's or you know these kind of things but she has just gorgeous natural green eyes with kind of thorn makeup going on around her eye which is just absolutely incredible really simple brows and this tattoo perhaps or makeup of a rose across her mouth just stunning so gorgeous so elegant i think someone called her exquisite and i think that is the word her veil is longer than her it's incredible so so glamorous and as usual we've got a plethora of piercings two in each ear that are like nice and flexible and they go right through the vinyl plus one in her nose and that's it for her on her piercings she's got that classic choker very goth very beautiful very elegant and simple her dress this is an incredible dress. I feel like I want to switch around their outfits and this is one of the dresses that seems like it would be kind of easy to switch out because some of the grommets and stuff like you'd have to go in and out with those um, if you wanted to redress them. But hers zips up in the back which is very nice. We won't take her, we won't get her naked right now but just uh, to, to show you she does um, zip up which is really really nice. A functioning zipper on a doll of this size. Her dress completely black except for this little ribbon rose. The sleeves are mesh and have this like incredible drapey and loose and just gives this absolute like gothic princess feel. The top is really nice and tight to her body but then it flares out in all of these gorgeous different layers of this like transparent-y kind of material. It's almost mesh. I think, yeah, it looks like there's two layers of it. And then does she have anything underneath? Nope. <laughs> Just nothing underneath. I thought that there was a modesty layer in this for some reason, but it appears to just be two layers of clear material, which I love that for her. Her shoes, they're again, kind of sticky, but ooh, that's fun. They have stars on them. They're not creepers, but they kind of remind me of creepers a little bit. And they've got a little star on the heel and they're just very cute. I love the look of like the super elegant gothic wedding dress with the chunky boots. One of my favorite things forever about like alternative styles is really delicate dresses with really chunky gorgeous boots. Yes, so Miss Divinity, absolutely incredible. I think her name suits her really well also. She just seems so regal, so elegant, and just absolutely breathtaking. I am so, so happy to have her in my collection. Her hair is so nice. You can tell that it's not just like rooted all around the edges, like they actually rooted the inside. Like you can, you can feel it's like nice and thick. I, oh, I'm so happy. I was really not expecting quality to be so high on these girls. They're blowing my mind. Okay, so the next one is kind of fun. I'm really excited to see her in person because I have to say when I've seen like kind of the reviews of her before, I was kind of like, mm, 
I don't know. Just for completionist sake and since she had her and I was like, you know what, like, let me just get her because when else am I gonna find her for $28? Like, come on. And I'm sorry to say that because even just seeing her in the box, I'm like, you're actually cute. I'm so sorry. So it's Lillian. Her full name is Lillian De Winter, and she's another girl from the series one. And as you can see, this is her in the box. Absolutely adorable. Same box as our other series one girls, these two over here. And again, she's got that red and black theme that it seems a lot of them in series one had going, which I didn't really realize, but it looks absolutely beautiful when you put them all together. The only one that's not red and black, I guess, is Storm, which a fun fact about Storm, she was consistently the most popular doll within the franchise, which is why she has a iteration in every series, I think, except for series six. I want to say every series has like one version of Storm. So the Storm that I have, this is Evening Storm. And I don't remember which series she's from. Basically, almost all of the series have a storm in them. Anyway, let's get gorgeous Lillian De Winter out of her box and take a closer look at her. I didn't mention it, but the boxes, some of them, not all of them, but they have this like little piece that kind of holds their hair down, which I guess is helpful. So this is her out of the box without the glare. You can see her. Let me zip up her top a little bit for her. Oh, there she goes, okay. And now let me struggle a little bit with her zip ties. Okay, that was much easier <laughs> than some of the other ones. And <laughs> it looks like we do have a little bit of an issue with dolls with bangs that have been in a box for 20 years. That's perhaps their bangs don't like to sit up exactly straight, but I can tell that maybe if I boil wash her, it's gonna look so freaking cute. Cause no offense, but it's a little goofy looking when her bangs are sticking up, which is I think what contributed to me like being being not super sure about Lillian here, but she's so freaking cute. She has the same hair as everyone else. Not sure on my hair fibers. Super soft. Nice. Not super greasy kind of situation, so I love that. She's got the same little tool net and headband kind of thing that Malice has. And then her eyes are absolutely gorgeous. She's got one red eye with a black pupil and one swirly hypnotic looking eye. She's got electric blue lipstick and this makeup that kind of looks like a mask. So there's two variants of her, one with a red belt and one with a black belt. But they're both super cute, so I wouldn't worry too much about variants. Lillian is absolutely adorable. One of the things that I can't get out of my head, though, ever since I read it in a Blogspot review, is that she kind of is giving goth superhero a little bit. <laughs> And I can't unsee it, but she's very, very cute. She's got this little cat suit on. Not quite three-quarter sleeve and very, very adorable with like the zip that goes all the way down. And it's actually got this really nice red lining that doesn't go all the way inside, but just like around. See a little bit there. It goes down to there. Her belt has these awesome little studs on it. And I don't think I mentioned, but for her piercing, she has two earrings in each ear, plus this big old lip stud which i adore her jacket is absolutely lovely i really really like how they constructed it it feels like a real life jacket it's got the lining on the inside that's like this lovely satin shiny material and then on the outside it's got lace are you joking me i love this level of detail on like little fashion dolls especially with like goth fashion it feels really really accurate i think to pieces that people might have been wearing back in the early days and hopefully still today. I hope that the scene's still alive. As I was saying, she has this gorgeous little cat suit, adorable, kind of just black, kind of thick, stretchy material. And then her shoes, I think her shoes are the same as Malice's, where they're kind of the chunky heel with like the little low down kind of style. Very, very cute. Maybe needs a little bit of a boil wash, but once she gets that done, I think she'll be absolutely absolutely adorable <laughs> and even if she's a little goth superhero she's my little goth superhero and we're hair twins so what more could you want look how cute my little family is looking i can't believe it grew so much in just one day for so long it was just belladonna all alone and then it was just her and storm her big sister storm and now oh so cool all right we have three to go i'm sorry if this is taking forever but i am having the time of my life these are so cool and i don't think i'll find such an amazing deal on them in a really long time so next we're gonna talk about serpentina maria sangria love her name so fun and rhymey and this is her in her box she's a series three gal and as i have heard is a notorious issue with our series three gals See Divinity, the yellowing on the face is a little bit of a problem. I don't think it's as bad as on Divinity for Serpentina, but 
just uh, something to note. I guess they use some different kind of vinyl or something in Series 3 because they do seem to have, from what I've heard, the worst of these issues. Oh, I'm so excited to have these girls like out and about and displayed. They just, they look so cool. They really are, uh, what do they call themselves? Living, breathing inspirations. Absolutely. I do feel like these are living, breathing inspirations. Even with my makeup today, I don't think I would have ever done like something so cool and fun. But then these little gals got me out of my comfort zone and I'm like, yes, yes. And reading their comic book last night, I was like, this is so cute. To be honest, um, some of it is very Early 2000s, uh, maybe not the most sensitive discussions of like mental health and um, that kind of thing, but you know, early 2000s, what can we say? Let's talk about Serpentia. I'm really excited to see her because I didn't, I don't think I was able to find any reviews of her, at least from the channels that YouTube was recommending me. I know that sometimes they're ding-dongs and don't show you the things you're looking for and show you a million of the things you're not looking for for days on end. But what can we do? Here she is out of her plastic. And as you can tell, she's got this kind of vampire snake sort of thing going on. Not sure what it is, but I like it. It's a little bit more simple than some of the other gals we've seen so far, but she is still absolutely gorgeous and breathtaking. How does she mean she took these dolls out of their boxes? Like, what do you mean? How did you get it back in then? How, why did I have to cut all these? I don't think you took them out of your boxes. Like, I think you took them out of your boxes. Anyway, regardless, ooh, her hair is so nice. This is like Bonita femur levels of satisfaction. I really, really enjoy that. Okay, so Serpentina, she's got really, really nice pulled back ponytail, which I didn't think I liked as much, but now that I can see the length of her hair, I'm like, yes, absolutely. However, I think I saw her with braids and it looked super cute. So I might have to see if I can braid her and see what I think of that. And then she's got this velvet cape. So, so gorgeous. Sorry, let's talk about her makeup first. All right, eyebrows are snakes. Are you joking? I love that for her. She's got snake eyes and purple eyeshadow, red lipstick, this kind of ball piercing, some earrings, just one single piercing in both ears, and a eyebrow piercing that goes right through the vinyl. As I said, she's wearing this velvet cape that goes all the way down to just above the tops of her heels, so she's not gonna be dragging it around when she's walking around, spooking all the townspeople. And I wanna kinda see her without her cape because her dress looks incredible. Oh no! Looks like our poor lady has a little bit of staining. This happens, I know. Divinity has it too, but I just realized she has little Fingernail paint on, much better done than mine. Please ignore that. But regardless, oh my gosh, without her cloak on, I think she's absolutely freaking stunning. I love this. Without the cloak, the dress reminds me so much more of Beetlejuice and she's just, she is really freaking cool. I didn't realize how cool she was. I also kind of want to give her maybe a DIY necklace. Maybe if I can give her something with like a little bat or a little snake, I think that would be a lot of fun. Ooh, she's so freaking cool. And yes, these are the boots that I need to talk to you guys about. These are like dream goth boots for me. They kind of remind me of my 225s, except they're taller. I love them. These are very freaking cool. And that's another thing I've been really lucky with on secondhand markets lately is secondhand boots. Blessed to the heavens. Maybe I need to do a boots tour soon, but regardless, Look at how gorgeous this dress is. Really, really beautiful, like white form fitting on the top and poofs out at the bottom. Amongst all her black and red sisters, she really pops being kind of all in white. And I almost think if she had like a white veil or something, that would just put her over the edge. I might have to play around a little bit with Serpentina because I feel like she has so much potential, but like, oh my God, absolutely gorgeous. I really, I'm excited. I just think her, her base dress is so gorgeous. But yeah, maybe just that cape I need to need to change out or something. And we're on the last two, but they're a very exciting last two, so I hope you can stick around for a couple minutes longer. Okay, so like I was talking about earlier, um, with Storm being like a really big fan favorite, she gets a doll in every series. So in this, we have 
Series 3 Storm, which was one that I was like so worried that she would have already sold because I was like, oh my god, so many people must want this doll. So like there's no way she's still gonna have her. But she did and I love her and it's back to school Storm. I really, really love plaid skirts and have a big history of wearing them. They've been one of my fashion staples ever since I got like into like punk fashion, I think. I'm so seeing like a little Storm in this almost like school kind of adjacent outfit, school uniform adjacent outfit is just adorable. Plus it's like a Storm with white hair which is so freaking cool because like all these dolls have either like black or red or like kind of unnaturally dyed hair but back to school storm and i think victoria creeper are the only two kind of blonde dolls i can think of so if you guys know about living dead dolls not be goth dolls but living dead dolls their first living dead doll was this little gal named sadie who had one black eye and one white eye and a little black dress with like a little white collar does she not remind you of someone like i'll put a little side by side but i just like to imagine in my little head canon that like sadie is storm's little sister or maybe like storm is sadie all grown up or like some i don't know it's very cute but regardless let's talk about this storm which like i said has white hair gorgeous miss stormo misery in her back to school form and this is yes series three so it has the same card as Divinity and Serpentina. Oh my gosh, Storm is so pretty. I can tell why she's a fan favorite. She's just like absolutely gorgeous. The heterochromia is so cool. The braided pigtails are iconic. Just in general, really strong character design. And I'm so sad that these got canceled. I'm so sad that there's only two comic book series. I'm so sad that these didn't make a bigger impact because I think that nowadays they would be able to go really really strong. Maybe they were just ahead of their time? Or maybe they weren't and like I'm just- yeah I don't think this person unboxed these. These are like literally still kajinkered into the box. Oh my god I feel like inbox collectors are gonna hate me for unboxing these dolls that have been imprisoned for 20 years but hey. The lady said she took them out so I, I took her on her word. Oh my god Storm is so pretty! Look at her! I'm obsessed. This outfit is giving it a little bit Frankie Stein and I love it. So let's start with her hair. Beautiful white platinum pigtails with just the two blue tendrils. The tendrils are one of my favorite part of Storm's design because I am such like a tendril person. I love having like little pieces of hair stick out. As usual, we've got her nose ring, her lip ring, and her double pierced ears. For her top, she's just got this really simple, adorable button down with like the pockets and it does have little buttons on it. And it also has a little tie, just like so freaking cute. I thought it would Velcro, but actually there's little snaps sewn under the buttons. So that's how you can get the shirt on and off if you wanted to change them out. And the skirt, really cute blue and green plaid. Honestly, I feel like she would make really good friends with Frankie Stein. They just could be little twin bestie friends. And then Storm has got these incredible boots again. They're the same ones that we just saw on Maria Serpentina Sangria, which maybe makes sense since they're both series three girls. But yeah, absolutely over the moon that she still had back to school Storm. This is... All the storms are on my grail list, pretty much. I'm a storm simp, what can I say? There is a vampire slayer storm that's incredible. There's a red riding storm that's absolutely amazing. Basically any iteration of storm slaps, so to have another one in my collection I am just so so pleased. And yeah, unfortunately she does have a bit of that yellowing face. It's really not showing up in the camera because my lights are so bright I think, but when I have her a little further away it's a little easier to see. Um, I'm gonna switch Belladonna over here. Oh my god, I love these. I'm obsessed with them and I'm so sad I didn't like find them earlier because I feel like as a little 13 year old, I would have gotten into dolls so much sooner because I really didn't get into dolls until I was in my 20s as a kid. I really didn't like dolls, they didn't appeal to me. But if I knew dolls like this existed, that would be a different story. <laughs> okay, we're on our last one and she's incredible. It's the only one from series two that we got. So we have a different box to look at. Exciting, exciting. So let's start with the back of the box so we can look at the other ladies and prolong the mystery a little bit. So in series two, we had Absinthia Chaser, Angelina Blasphemina. She's so cool. Really, really love the concept of her. Susie Sinful, Casual Storm, and Victoria Creeper. Can you guess? Can you guess who it is? Well, if we didn't talk enough about my storm simping, it's Casual Storm! 
so freaking cool so gorgeous in person i I'm obsessed with her. I think I need to do like a storm cosplay or something. I gotta, gotta figure out where they sell a little black out or like little X'd out contact lenses because I'm sure I can find them very easily somewhere, but I think they're really integral to a storm cosplay. So what does series two say? Bleeding Edge Goths proudly presents series two. Yes, the little goth family is expanding, so clear a space for more gloom in your room. Pierced and dressed for a funeral, Bleeding Edge Goths pay tribute to a subculture notorious for being ignored. Interesting. <laughs> Bleeding Edge refuses to put the goths in the corner. So play with them or display them proudly. They're here to stay. They really are. You guys are going to stay in my collection for the very, very, very long time. So let's get Miss Casual Storm out of her box. And she is incredible. She, this outfit is definitely... Like, yes, it's very vintage, and I could definitely see like a 90s or an early 2000s goth wearing this, but this is also almost starting to creep into more modern, like kind of TikTok-y territory, which I think is really cool and very fashionable. And it just goes to show that like trends recycle and things that aren't popular get popular and then they go out of style and come back in style and such is the way of life. Let's look at Gorgeous Storm. Oh, she is freaking precious. I'm obsessed with the split dye hair. I think that maybe is what's giving me TikTok is just like the split dye hair is like a very, is a thing that I associate very much with that kind of subculture, which is cool. Very cool. And Storm is rocking it and her hair is such nice quality. I'm like literally so impressed and happy about that. She's got a blacked out eye with the red X and a red eye with a black X. So just her classic X's, X'd out eyes, but with red and black. Absolutely love that take of it. She's got her gorgeous hair in her usual braids and her tendrils, which are just incredible. Red lipstick and that big old lip piercing, which I adore on her. Her dress is so freaking cute. Just this like little black and white. I don't even know what you would call this style but it's really, really cute. It's got all these like little metal details and like the belt has all these little loops around it. There's tiny grommets at the top. It just feels like a very like industrial kind of corp goth sort of. I love it. Again, we've got little snaps as the way that this dress does and undoes. And underneath her dress, she's got little fishnet stockings, so appropriate and a necessary accessory for any goth. And as usual, she's got her little knees that kind of can just bend a little bit and feel like they're gonna break every time you do it. And her shoes are really cute. I don't think we've seen these shoes before, but they're really incredible chunky platforms with the clown toe, which I love. I love shoes with like the really big toe and big old heels on the back and just a giant platform. And I think she is just absolutely darling. So freaking cute. I think one of my favorite things about Storm is her eyebrows. She's got the kind of Rochelle Goyle brow thing where like they always look like kind of sad and like they're like praying or like whatever. And it's just, it's so cute. It's so pretty for dolls. Can you see them all? Yeah. That's the family now. Updated, improved. I need to find space in my room for them. I like cleared out a space yesterday, but oh my God, I don't think it's enough because oh my gosh, they're, they're so beautiful and glorious. And I just, they really need like center, center stage. I am so, so thankful that I was able to find these, especially again at like such a reasonable price because like, yeah, these are getting sold for like $75 for one doll feels ridiculous to me. So to be able to find them for like 28, Heroes Facebook Marketplace, I adore you for life. So yes, I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. I really enjoyed filming it and getting to share these amazing beauties with you guys. Tell me which one's your favorite. Do you collect them? Um, I'd really love to know uh, because yeah, these girls, uh, this series does not get enough love. They're an absolutely stunning, breathtaking, really, really cool concept of fashion dolls. And I'm so sad that they got cut short when they did. But yeah, I think they're absolutely really, really cool. A super interesting thing to look into if you're into the alternative or spooky fashion. I'll link Werewolf Lydia below and also like an Instagram page that's kind of dedicated to them that I found through Werewolf Lydia, so thank you there. Um, but yes, basically me and the goth dollies wish you a wonderful rest of your day or night or whatever you happen to be watching. I'm just so excited to spend my night um, admiring these girls and setting them up and figuring out where they're gonna live because they're just yeah I'm obsessed they're so freaking cool I, I I can't believe that I found them I just uh yeah I feel super lucky so thank you again for watching I will quit rambling and taking up so much of your time um I love you forever and I hope you have a great rest of your day night whatever have a good one bye